Well, ladies, we'll wrap this up. Hey, you good. Good. I'm not going to be too long this morning. We've already had Dylan talk to us, and uh, we've had our Bible study group. And uh, bear with me. This thing keeps coming up and down. So. Uh, let's just have a word of prayer. Lord, I love you. I thank you for your word. It is uh, life to us. It is hope to us. And you have given it to us to learn all about you and to learn what you want us to do. And I thank you. Let these words that I speak, Lord, be of you this morning and give them life. Amen. Amen. Like I said, I'm not going to be uh, too long this morning, but last week, Sandy introduced us to the Holy Spirit part of the Trinity uh, from the beginning of creation. Right. So she showed us how the Trinity came to be and when it started. And I'll just, I just want to talk. The Holy Spirit is not this great mystery. It is, uh, it is intimate. It is a part of the Trinity. It's, there's no woo-woo about it. You know, it is, it is part of the Godhead. And it is what we have here on earth today. He is our counselor. And it is a part of us. It's, it's a part of us. Just like Christ, uh, we accept him in our heart as our savior. The Holy Spirit is part of us. It dwells in us. It lives in us. The scripture says you, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Listen to that. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, you take the Holy Spirit with you because it lives in you and dwells in you. And I just want to look at today the role of the Holy Spirit in our life, uh, some of the roles. And um, in both the church in Acts and in the church today. And, of course, you are the church. So it's whatever I'm saying is applies to how the Holy Spirit works in your life today. In the book of Acts, there are 57 references of the Holy Spirit. 57. We are introduced to the Holy Spirit in book Acts. It, we see this throughout. It wasn't just chapter 1 and chapter 2. They got filled and they went out. There's 57 references. And maybe this week, take the time to look at those things. Look up scripture. Look at those references of the Holy Spirit in Acts while you uh, study for next week also. What's the Holy Spirit's role in our life? The first one, I believe, is to give us power. It says that the power, you will receive power. Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That is the first thing that it says, that it will give you power. We are walking power machines, ladies. That's what we are, right? And what do we do with that power? What do, once we have that power, and the Holy Spirit's role will direct us and guide us in that power. And it's through prayer. When you look at uh, Acts 1, the followers of Jesus, what did they do? They gathered in the upper room mm -hmm. with their minds in full agreement, devoted themselves to prayer. That's what they did up there. Mm -hmm. They didn't just chit chat and eat. And they were in one mind and said, we got to get busy. we got to start praying. We've got to find out what God wants us to do. And that's how you find out what God wants you to do is through prayer. If you don't, I encourage you, get a prayer life. Start praying to the Lord. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I just want to be used by you. I want you to direct me today. Let me know if I'm supposed to talk to somebody in the grocery store or while I'm pumping gas or whatever. You direct me. Direct me that I may, because I am full of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, direct me in what I'm supposed to do today. And we get that direction through prayer. We get all these things through prayer. John 16, 13 said, when the spirit of truth come, he will guide you in all truth. So what is, what is one of his roles? He guides and directs us. And how do we get that direction? Through prayer. That's right. The next thing he does is he instructs us. How does he instruct us? He instructs us through the scripture. So not only are we to have a prayer life, we are to have an active scripture reading life. We are to read our Bibles every day. 
And that's what he said. Joel prophesied of the coming of the Holy Spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's what John, Joel prophesied. So he instructs us. He helps us. John 14 says, truly, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me, he will also do the works that I am doing. He will even do greater things. <coughs> Dylan even said that. He will do greater things than these because I am going to the Father. So he's saying, I, when I go to the Father, I'm leaving the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit is going to be in you and he is going to direct you and he is going to instruct you and you are going to do greater things. Dylan talked about that. I love that. Greater things. It may not be resurrection of the dead. It may, it may not, it's those little things. You're going to do greater things. You're going to touch more people in your life than Christ was able to through the Holy Spirit. That's what he's telling you to do. He also said in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, and how does he instruct us? And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He instructs us to go and make disciples. He instructs us to go. So what does the Lord want you to do? Again, let's go back. It's through prayer. Say, Lord, direct me today. Instruct me today. You know, I have plans. And give the Lord your plans. And then say, Lord, if these plans are for you, from you, and if this is, then guide me. Direct mm -hmm. me and show me. Confirm them through your Holy Spirit, through your word, through prayer, through an encouragement, through someone. And what is this, does the Holy Spirit do? He leads us. He does not leave us alone, but he leads us through his presence. Where do we get into his presence? Through our prayer. When we sit in our prayer and we can feel God's presence and we invite him in, after you read the word, after you pray, just set. Kathleen talked to us about that last week. Just set into the presence of the Lord and let him lead you. He will lead you. He will. You can be, you can, you can bet on this. He will direct. He will instruct. He will lead. That's what the Holy Spirit does in our life. And that's what you need to ask him to do. I need you to direct me. I need you to instruct me. I need you to direct me and tell me and lead me. Lead me in that. Prayer enables us to be led by the Holy Spirit, just as those in the upper room were waiting with the Holy Spirit. He instructed them, you go there, you wait, and the Holy Spirit, they knew in prayer that they were waiting for that promise. They were waiting to be instructed. We're waiting for our instructions. Paul was led by the Holy Spirit as where to go for ministry. When we look in 16, Acts 16.6, 16, the Spirit prevented Paul from going to Asia. He was about ready to pack up and go. And the Spirit get, said, no, you're not to go there. You're to go here. And the Holy Spirit will do the same thing in your life. It's not a great mystery. Going back to the end, the Holy Spirit's not a great mystery. He is part of the Godhead. He lives in you. And this is his role in your life. Galatians says we are to walk. We are to be led and we are to be guided by the Holy Spirit. That's what it does in our life. That's its role. That's your responsibility. Your responsibility is that. And in 16.7, the Holy Spirit prevented Paul from going to Bethina. He was supposed to go there. And uh -uh, you're to go here. And the Holy Spirit will do that. Paul's no great mystery person. He was a man, just like you are flesh and blood, and you want to be used by the Lord, and the Lord will, will do that. He, he is faithful and do that, and that's what he wants to do in our life. I want to encourage you. We see church. the church began at Acts. That's where it began. The roots of it began at Acts. That was book one, chapter one, page one. We have come in at what? Maybe page 5,052, but you, it's part of your story. You are the church. You are the continuum of what Christ started and what the Holy Spirit began in Acts. You are the church. You are the continuum of that. That's what I want you to get today's ladies. 
You can't, we just can't sit and be soaked by these Bible studies. We just can't sit and be soaked by the word just being put into us. We have got to do something with all that. We are responsible to take that knowledge and to share with others. We are the church continuum. We are witnesses. We are the, the ones that are supposed to go into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. It is a continuum. It just keeps going. It doesn't stop. You are part of that. I want you through prayer saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What lies do you want me to touch? Who do you want me to speak to today? That's what the Holy, talk to the Holy Spirit in through prayer and he will guide you. And I, like I said, I encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to, to guide you in your Christian walk and to lead you daily through prayer, through the word, what he wants you to do for him and how he wants you to minister with him. He's not leaving you alone. When Christ rose to, from the dead, ascended into heaven, he goes, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm giving you a comforter. So say, Lord, what are we doing today together? What do you want to do today? Through the Holy Spirit. What do you want to do today? And I'll leave you with the scripture, John 14, 16 through 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, mm -hmm. even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Mm. you know him the holy spirit is no big mystery because you know him mm. he lives in you he dwells in you mm. he is a part of you and i encourage you to take that and start exercising that start as start building on that relationship with the holy spirit let him empower you with the work that you're supposed to do and he has called you to do pastor dylan said it so eloquently this morning where i can't do the work that you're supposed to do I can't do the work, Barbara, that you're supposed to do with those ladies over at Riverbend. I can't do that work. He hasn't called me to. But you you have to be faithful in it because he hasn't called me. He's called you. And you have to be faithful in that. And that's what your prayer should be every day. Lord, help me be faithful. Show me what I'm supposed to do and help me be faithful in that. Amen. Amen. That's the word of the Lord today. Lord, I just love you. I know I say that often, but I do. I thank you for the word. I thank you for these ladies and what you're teaching us through your word and through your Holy Spirit. And I ask you, Lord, let us be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Let us every day wake up and say, Lord, what do you want to do together? Mm -hmm. Be obedient, Lord. Help me to be obedient. Amen.